the directory on your file system. When you import a file manually, that's going there too. So basically what you can do with that uh, contributed module that's possible to write is you just pick whatever file was uploaded by mistake, you delete that file, and then you just drop the, all the translations and then you import every, every pure file that's there. And in that case, you just restore the previous state. But if you also manually change things on a user interface, we do not write that out into pure files, the, those changes. So there is no direct solution to that. That's also possible to write a module for that, but we don't have that. So if you don't use that interface at all, and you accidentally import a PO file, it's much easier to recover from. Because all the PO files are in the file system that you used to import sometime earlier. They are sitting there, and you can re-import them. Yes. Yeah, in the future, the system is possible to fix that. Okay, I think I'm running out of time anyway, so if people have questions, please come over. Um, I will be around, I will be at the sprint, so I would love to work with you if you could come over and um, interested in solving some of the remaining problems. They're very interesting. Uh, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Actually added a lot of 
um, additional power to what we do in the multilingual system. So you'll see, for example, with views, that views and multilingual, where they intersect, uh, gives you very powerful tools in the report. The other thing that I wanted to leave with is I'm the person doing this session, but obviously uh, there's a lot more people who work on this. So there is a Drupal 8 multilingual initiative and this is a list of people who worked on the initiative. The bigger names contributed more, the bolder names contributed more recently. And it's not, in fact, the whole list. That would be the whole list. So it's a result of a whole lot of people working on this. So I think um, we put in a lot of effort. And across 1,300 of us, we also had a lot of fun building this up for you. So we went to all kinds of events and sat down and worked with each other and mentored each other on different issues and just figured out how to make things happen. We also just sat down alone and worked very hard. Uh, also had a lot of fun and celebrated a lot when we figured out our solutions. We also worked on a lot of issues. So if you try to count the issues that we tagged with V8MI, Drupal 8 Multilingual Initiative, there's over 1,700 of them. We did not resolve all of the issues. There's got to be Drupal 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, Drupal 9, hopefully sometime. So there's stuff to improve, but you'll see that we did a whole lot of things. And the question is, why, why did all these people come together and do all these uh, crazy improvements, thousands of issues? The reason is, um, we, we've, had, we've, had, uh, we've had experience with how to build these things. And we've had our own struggles. So we've seen that people use Drupal in all kinds of environments. Like, for example, Berlin uses it on their um, uh, city marketing site, e Berlin. Also, Canada uses it on Keep Exploring, their Canada marketing site. Magic the Gathering uses it if you've been role playing ever before. A, uh, they are make, uh, makers of um, fun games. There's the banking sector uses it, this time from Lithuania. The public transport sector uses it in Montreal, uh, the beauty sector uses it, these are all multilingual Drupal sites. Pinterest uses it for their business sites, in this case in Japanese. Uh, the World Health Organization uses Drupal multilingual, UNESCO uses Drupal multilingual. If you want to register a domain name in India, you would go by a uh, multilingual Drupal site. If you want to connect with the government, India, like up the IN is a multilingual Drupal site. If you're interested in some TV, on um, uh, Sony, Sony TV, that's also a multilingual Drupal site. So it's kind of hard not to bump into a multilingual Drupal site. So a lot of people already do this. Uh, any, anybody in the room who had pain doing this, struggled with issues, anybody? Okay, a lot of you, yes. So it is possible, but we wanted to make it a lot simpler. And these organizations, they probably have a lot of resources and money to work their stuff out. But what I'm really proud of is the small sites, like this one uh, from Stanford. They have a site in English, Portuguese, and So they have uh, a site in three languages, and just for a small program for kids to make them learn technology. So it's, it's a site that does not have resources to put in developers and solve all their problems. So they need a system where they can just fire off a multilingual site and be happy with that um, in no time. The problem is we are not really delivering that with Drupal 7. So Drupal 7, we have Drupal Core, then you're able to look out, module is great, you can have languages configured on the site, it's kind of nice. You can translate the interface. But then, it's all manual, you need to enter everything manually. If you download translations from the community, you need to manually download them from localizer.drupal.org, import into the site, have them on the site, manual update views module and panels module. Their translations are outdated, you need to manually go out again, download again, import again. It's very painful. So, you would obviously install localization update module, which automates all of that for you. It downloads all of those translations. When you add new modules, when you upgrade modules, it's very nice. So that's it for interface translation. 
you still cannot do any multilingual content. So you enable the content translation module, that's nice. So now you can have multiple copies of the same content piece on the site, different languages, have relations between them. Now, now you put them in menus. Menus are translatable. No, sorry. So you install the I89 module, that's nice. It enables you to translate menus. It also enables you to translate a few other things like field labels and, and block titles and stuff like that. But now you're scratching your head, you want to translate this, uh, the emails that are sent out to users. Emails are being sent out, they are not translatable at all. None of these modules allow you to translate the emails that are sent out to users. So, now you enable the variable modules. That's a whole set of modules. So that's a variable module, the variable um, I-89 modules, then there's connecting modules between the two. So it actually enables you to translate those um, email text. Okay, now that's fine. Now you have an e-commerce uh, shop on the site. You want to sell stuff. Anything would enable you to translate that? No. So, you grab the Entity Translation Module. Okay, Entity Translation Module, that allows you to translate whatever entity you want. It also allows you to translate taxonomy terms, but you already installed the IAT Net Module, which does allow you to translate taxonomy terms as well. So now you have two ways to translate taxonomy terms. The Content Translation Module you also have, which you used before to translate nodes. So now you have two ways to translate nodes, Entity Translation and Content Translation. It's very nice. So even trying to figure out, at this point, what tool to use for what, like I have a taxonomy term, how do I translate it, or I have a how do I translate it, this app. So, uh, I salute you for figuring it out on Drupal 7. Congrats. You deserve an applause. Very good. Good job. So Drupal 8, we wanted to make this simple. We wanted to have one solution for everything, and so that that solution actually works with whatever other module you've added, what if, if you have rules, if you have e-commerce if you have whatever, like, workbench or something else. So, we added a system for managing languages. And those about your languages, and that's it. It decides how languages picked, etc., and that's a base choice. Then, we have a system for translating the interface of Drupal, and that works across everything on the interface. You can translate views with that, you can translate content types or things that are built in to uh, your code. We have a content translation system that allows you to translate whatever content, content meaning um, all kinds of things. We'll define that later on. And we have, finally, a solution for translating all the configuration. So these four pieces basically cover everything in Drupal core, and they are extensible and they allow you to translate every configuration you can trip, every content you can fit, every code that ships with modules, and every um, base configuration as well. So let's go through these and see um, what's in each part. So let's start with language. So language is a separate module now in Drupal core. It's called the language module. And we wanted to really highlight this feature out of the get-go from the start. So when you install Drupal, the first screen you see is a language selector. So you go there. It already selects you the language based on your browser preference, in my case, Hungarian. <coughs> But you can pick whatever else from the 100 or so languages we have. In this case, I'm just going to pick Arabic, why not? And then you hit Save and Continue, and it downloads the translations right away automatically in the installer. The next screen is going to be Arabic. It's a bug that it's not right to left. It's going to be right to left soon. So you pick your uh, install profile, you give it your database credentials, and it's all Arabic, except where it's not translated, it's not our fault. So. You hit that, and now from then on it's RTL as well, and, um, and it's working with the installation. So basically, the first thing you choose when you install Drupal is what your language is, and beyond that you don't need to know anything about English, it's all going to be in your language. And it's all working uh, however you want. So that's the first thing that the, language, uh, the new language system does. The second thing is language assignment. So the problem with translating stuff is we can only translate stuff if we know what language is in. Otherwise, we make assumptions may or may not be true. Drupal 7 makes a lot of assumptions about language, and it makes a lot of mistakes based on those assumptions. Um, so the problem in Drupal 7 is it only supports saying what language a node is in, what language a user is in, and what language a path alias is in. If you set up a view in Drupal 7, we have no idea if you set that view up in Hindi or if you set that view up in Spanish or whatever other language, we don't know. 
We need to assume that you probably created that view inside the default language. It may or may not be true. Um, we don't know what your what your user emails are set up, what language they are in. We have no idea. So that's kind of a problem. So in 8, we decided to extend this basically infinitely. So in Drupal 8, we know the language of a taxonomy term. We know that taxonomy term was in this language. We know the language of views. So when you create a view, you can create a view in Hindi, and then if you need a view that's only available in the English part of the site, you can create that view in English. And then later on, if you decide to like translate the English one to Hindi, and the Hindi one to English, it's totally fine. It's going to work. So we know the language of views. We know the language of your site information, like we know what language your site name is, your emails, etc. All of them. And that's basically infinitely extensible. So we can go on and assign language to whatever. We know the language of your menus. We know the language of your menu items. We know the language of the blocks that display your menus with your menu items. So we know all of And then we need to figure out um, how, which language to use. So we have this content language screen for content language assignment. And by default, whoops, that's not what I meant. That's again what I meant. Okay. So we have a content language screen for assigning what language to use for our content. Because now we know the language for everything, but it could be very tedious to set up language all the time. Like when you create a view, we kind of hide that language setting behind a separate screen because we make an assumption and you can configure it however you want. When you create a forum post on a site, on a random site, it would be kind of jarring to see a language selector there. It's very confusing. So we decided to, to give you an option to configure your language defaults for content. And the way we do that is by default we create all content in the site default language. And you can set up divergence from that. So you can say you want to create content in a different language and custom blocks in different languages as well. And then you can say, okay, there's articles and basic pages and forum topics. So maybe I want to create forum topics in English all the time. I don't want a multilingual forum. I don't show the language selector on forum topics. But for articles, I want to default them to English, but I want to show the language selector on them. And for basic pages, it's fine to default to the side default language. Don't show the language selector. And then for basic blocks, I want to create them in English again and show the language selector. So basically, it's very flexible in terms of how you want to set up the interactions for language assignment for these things. So you can say it always assumes the site default language, in which case those are not checked. Or you can diverge from that and say, I want to specify the language uh, dynamically whenever I create that type of content. Or you can say, I want to fix that thing to a specific language. So if you have a single language form, it's very easy to set up. So that's about um, setting up language defaults for content. And that, that, I'm not sure you've noticed, but it has dynamic defaults, like the current page's selected language, or the user's preferred language, or the site's default language. So like if you take reviews on products, then the user will probably submit the review in the language of the page, because they only study the rest of the page. So you can default the review to the language of the page, and you're not sure the language selector to reviewers. That makes you can get a multilingual reviews, like depending on the page, it can be in any language, but the user is not bothered with specifying the language at all. So you know the data, but the user is not uh, bothered with um, the interaction. And then we brought language to uh, blocks as well. So once you have information about language of content, you have information about language of views, etc. You probably also want to have language for your page building elements. And Drupal 8 comes with blocks for that still. We don't have a fancy resolution yet. So we put language visibility into core for blocks. And that means that when you have language module enabled, there is this language selector on blocks. And it allows you to select which languages will this block show up on. If you don't check anything, it will show up on all the pages. So it's very easy to set up pages for different languages, height, certain things. This can be used to set up multi uh, multilingual menus, for example, with entirely different menus. Every menu is displayed with a block. So you can say, I want a different menu on my Hindi site from my English site. So you can set up a menu in Hindi, a menu in English, and then show them uh, in their block, and then show their, uh, set up their language visibility based on 
uh, which menu you want to see on which page. So that's also available with blocks. And now we have all those languages, how do we decide what's actually used on the page is uh, based on our language selection criteria. And this was available in Drupal 8, uh, 7 as well, but we've improved this a whole lot. So one of the things is in Drupal 7 you enable log camera module and you add a few languages and nothing happens because there is no defaults, there's no sensible defaults for language selection. In Drupal 8 we have this URL language selection um, feature enabled by default. And then when you go in and configure that, the prefix and domain configuration is right in there on one page, so you can review all the prefixes and domains for a language, so you don't need to go to every language and figure out what's set up and how. So it's very easy to set it up here with path, path prefixes and domains. The session selection is pretty much the same as before. The user uh, configuration is the same for user preferences. The browser setup is very different because now we allow you to map external language codes to internal language codes. So Drupal understands that not all the language codes are the same across the globe. So like Chinese has all kinds of language codes used that we map to our internal language code and you can add whatever mapping you want. Um, so that uh, when browser language preferences come in, we can map it to internal languages. And then we have administration uh, page uh, user preferences, so you can browse the administration experience in the, pre in the preferred language. And we have a selected language fallback, which you can configure either to the site default or to some specific language. This solves one of the biggest problems in Drupal 8, because uh, Drupal 7, because in Drupal 7 people change the default language of the site, and Drupal 7 makes a lot of assumptions about the default language. As I've said before, everything you created assumes to be in the default language. So when you change that, it just breaks everything. So here, this is totally separate from the site default language. You can configure it to however, however you want. And, um, and just the uh, site's gonna use that. So you can build the site in whatever language you want, and when you hand it over to the client, you just change the language fallback, and then they can use their favorite language as a default. And then we put in name transliteration. So if you type in a name, Drupal generates a machine name, but that was usually difficult with all kinds of foreign languages. So in this case, this string contains all the Hungarian special characters. Uh, it turns out to be a readable English string, and that happens to work with a lot of the other things that works with Russian, with Arabic, all kinds of other things. So we have a library built in core to tr do transliteration for machine names. We don't have transliteration for file uploads, for path releases, or for anything else in core at this point. Uh, I would love if you would come on Sunday and help us uh, build out those things for 8.1, 8.2, because that's a very often, often requested feature, but we haven't been able to get around to that. We have this resolved though. One thing that, um, at least in Europe, is very popular is English can be deleted from the site. So in Drupal 7, English is always there, like you can disable it, but then i 89 tends to show disabled languages and places. It's going to be very confusing to see English all the, all the place where you don't need to have English. So in Drupal 8, you can just delete English. And the way it works, for all the things that are in English, like the text in the source code, is obviously gonna work because it's hard-coded in English, so there's not no way to remove that. But the English itself is not going to be on the system, it's not going to be show up in language selectors or anywhere for the user, uh, it's very convenient if you actually don't need English. So, in summary, you can delete English. There's a very flexible system for selecting language. It's, uh, it has sensible defaults now, so URL selection is enabled by default, there's browser mappings, etc. Uh, we have block visibility for a language, so you can hide and show blocks per language. Um, um, you can place a block multiple times on the page, I haven't even talked about that. But that allows you to place something at different uh, places for different languages. So if you have a special uh, special news item running for a certain region, you can put that up um, for that specific region, and then you can hide it for everything else, or you can put it up down on the page for some other region or some other language. It's very easy to show the same thing multiple places based on language. It's very cool. Uh, we have flexible configuration for language defaults on content. Uh, we know language of uh, a lot of things, and it's the first in the installer. So who's liking all these new things? Cool. So this was one-fourth of the improvements 
and Drupal 8. Somebody asked if it's going to be easier in Drupal 8. I hope. So next one, interface translation. So as I've said, the problem with Drupal 7 interface translation is it's, manu it's manual. A lot of manual work. A lot of work. Drupal 8, everything's automated. So in the installer, you pick a language and it downloads right before the next screen appears. If you later add languages, it downloads translations right away at that point. If you install new modules, it downloads translations in the installation uh, progress bar. It's like downloads the translations and applies it on the site. So by the time it's, it says done, it's already translated and downloaded. And if the community updates your translations on localized.drupal.org, it downloads the updated translations as well, automatically. Now, you may be all freaked out because you're going to deploy a site and then it's going to automatically download things in the background. Not very good. However, what we did is we centralized this download stuff into one directory. And what you can do is you can use this automated download system in your staging or development environment where it just happens. Then you do the quality assurance. And then you push this directory to the live site and you disable the automated updates there. And as part of the deployment process, you can just import those files uh, in the deployment process and you are done with your updates to the live site. So it's very easy to use this on a staging site. Of course, if you don't have a complicated staging uh, live environment, you can just run it on the live site. If, like on my blog, I, I'm using it on my live site. It's not mission critical. So uh, but for any, anybody that wants to like take care of what's on, what words are used, then it's very easy to do. The other thing where you want to take care of what words are used is you make modifications to those translations. Because let's admit, not everybody's happy with the translations that the community does. So what we did in 8 is you can customize those translations on the site, and we know which strings you customize. So we track every string that you customize. And by default, we do not overwrite those customizations from the community. So even if the community updates translations to those strings, we keep your customizations on the site. Um, you can obviously set it up to override it from the community, but by default this makes, it makes uh, no sense. And because all the strings are marked, you can export your customized strings and take the same customizations to, an act to the next client, and then take those customizations to the next client. So you can reuse your same favorite translations, or you can use these translation files across different markets that you serve or whatever you want. So um, it's very easy to, to, um, to customize and use those customizations across different systems. We made it very easy to touch up on translations. So you, you, who knows this user interface translation search interface from Drupal 7? Not a lot of you. So probably the reason for that is this is impossible to use in Drupal 7. Because you search for something, and then you get a table with a summary of languages crossed out where translations are available, then you click in and you have uh, 20 languages on the site, and now you have 20 input fields for one string to translate one string to 20 languages at once. Uh, and you probably don't know all 20 languages of the site. So what you would likely do is you would want to search and then get results and then translate them right away, right? That makes sense. So that's what we do in Drupal 8. So we have a table. It supports singular plural pairs. We obviously support plurals in any numbers. So this example is Hungarian. We have the same number of plurals as English, but it works with whatever number of plurals you have in your language. And it marks stuff that you changed with a special color. So if you come back from Chai, see, see what you changed. And it saves them as customized translations. So if I search for only translated strings customized, then I will be able to see that those things I customized on the site. So these are now protected from community updates. They are not going to be overwritten by anything else. So it's very easy to do on the site. Another thing that uh, people really want, and they use the string overrides module for that, is change the English text on the site. So let's make login say sign in. It is not possible in 8, uh, not possible in 7. Some people uh, take, uh, take the string overrides module. Other people set up English custom language. Uh, both have their own problems. So what you can do to write is translate to English. Sci-fi. So by default, English is not applicable as a translation language. But you can go edit English. It's a very easy edit form. And it has a checkbox at the bottom that says enable translation to English. And now English is the translation target. 
And I can say, okay, I want to uh, search for a login in English. And I want to change that to sign in and save that. Um, save that. And then from now on, my login uh, button on the uh, anonymous front end will say sign in. So if I go to my anonymous front end, we'll say sign in on the button. Uh, at the bottom here. So very easy to touch up on interface text. No need to set up any other modules. No need to uh, set up a special English language. And this is very useful because if you set up a special English language, you're going to get confused. You have a custom English in English, and some content is in this, and some content is in the other one. Uh, is a mess. So yeah, so that's interface translation. You can translate to English as in change the English interface text. We have a whole new interface for an insight translation of your interface. We try to customize translation so you can diverge from the community if you want. However, we also uh, collect translations from the community, automatically download them and update them, even for contributed modules and themes in a future compatible way. And we put that into a central directory that you can use in your deployment system and disable this feature on the website. And it's a whole totally separate module, so if you don't need interface translation, you just want to track languages on files, you don't need to enable this module, you just use the language module, be happy with that one. Anybody found useful things in there? Yeah? Cool. So that's half of what we changed. The second half is still left. So our next one up is content translation. So as I said, the problem in Drupal 7 with content translation is we have this modeling core called content translation. It only allows you to translate nodes. It also makes copies of nodes that are separate copies. We also have this very fancy entity translation module in Contrib that allows you to translate all kinds of entities, but it does not allow you to translate the titles of some of the entities. You need to have the title module as well. And um, the two of them are not directly compatible, so you may either use one or the other. You, it's hard to migrate from one to the other, and it's even harder to choose between them. And the worst part is contributed modules may or may not be compatible with one or the other. I think that's the biggest pain point. So we wanted to have a system where all content entities are supported, and all the contributed modules work with that system. So that's a huge benefit of having this in core, because we can have a base solution for everyone. So the question is, what's a content entity? As I, I use this in a pretty broad sense. So Drupal 8 has entities, which means basically things that have instances of them, have multiples of them. And there are two types of things that can have multiple items. There are content entities, which usually take fields, but not all of them take fields. So for example, nodes. Uh, users, uh, comments, taxonomy terms, contact messages, menu items, etc., are content entities. So we have um, language support for them, as shown before. We can configure language defaults for them and the user interface of how language is applied. But you can also translate all of them into different languages, and that's very powerful. So we base this on the entity translation module from uh, Drupal 7, and you configure it on the same screen where you used to configure language defaults for content. And now is the time to pay, uh, pay special attention. So it's the same screen. It's now called Content Language and Translation, since I enabled translation. It still has a summary of the same content types. But now there's a translatable checkbox for every content type. So I want articles translatable. Now I have all the fields for articles one by one. And I can decide if the title is translatable, or the author is tracked per language, or the publishing status is different per language. And for images, I can even say I want to have the same file, but I want to have a different alt text and title text. And I can decide if I want to have taxonomy terms separate or not. Same for blocks, same for basic pages, same for forum topics. So basically, all the fields that are supported on an entity type are uh, exposed here. And you can say which fields you want to translate. So you can say I want to track the author per language. I want to publish things uh, per language. So I may be publishing the Hindi version of this, but not the English version, or vice versa. Or you can track, you can have the same file, but different text. Like if you're selling products, you probably have the same product photo on different languages, but you want to have different text on them for all text and title text. 
But if you have illustrations for a book, they probably have different language illustrations because they have text on them uh, on the image as well. So you can make your own choices here by, uh, for every field. So this is very similar to how entity translation works in 7. It's field-based. But if you really like the content translation modeling core in 7, you just check all the checkboxes, every single checkbox. And that is practically the same thing because now you have a copy of every field in every language. And now you have a copy of the content in every language. So um, it's easy to reproduce the, both approaches from 7. And it's possible to reproduce anything in between. It matters on what you choose. And you don't need to do any migrations because it just happens in the configuration system. There's no like migrations between the configurations. So I think that's kind of powerful. It really brings all of these uh, together. The translation interface for content is really boring. Same thing as a translate tab that, that was in uh, Drupal 7. You go to translate tab, it has a list of languages that are available. You pick a language, you want to add that translation into two columns, a node form, in this case for a node, and then you can just enter that translation and uh, be happy with the results. So that's, um, that's content translation. So now you have that content in all the languages. How do you get that content out to people? Uh, so Drupal 8 includes views. And it not just includes views as in you've installed views on Drupal 7, no. It includes views and it makes views a fundamental part of the system. So when you go to the front page of Drupal 8, it's a view. You can customize the front page and change whatever you want about it, what's displayed, what's, how it's filtered, if it's a table or a list. If you go to the um, recent comments block, it's a view. So you can customize how many comments are displayed, if it has a pager or not, where does it go, if it has an X button, whatever. If you go to the node admin page, the content listing page is a view. So you can customize what filters are available in the page. You can customize what columns are displayed for your content administration. You can clone the page and create a different view for your workflows. You can clone the page and create a different view for your translators. It's very powerful. So if you master views, you can do a lot of things. The views is basically two things. It's a query builder, so you can tell it what to, how to uh, produce results for you. And it's a display builder, so you can tell it how to display those results. It's a query builder and a display builder. And it has support for language in both areas. So in the query builder, which is uh, in the first column in views, we have a filter uh, criteria for content language. And this is the default front page, by the way, in Drupal 8. It's uh, set up to filter to the uh, translation language equal to the content language selected for the page. So when you switch language on the front page from English to Hindi, it's going to filter to only the Hindi translations or only the English translations by default. But you can set this up to be filtering to the user's default or not filtering at all, or showing multiple languages or showing only translations that were translated more than a month ago and may need to be updated, whatever. So it's very easy to build up filters uh, based on your needs. And then on the rendering side, which is in the second column here, there's a language rendering language setting which decides on how the result is actually going to be rendered. So that default for the front page is content language of view row, which is the, the language that the result was found in. So we basically render whatever we found. But you can configure this to render the original language version of that. So you can filter for whatever is not translated to Hindi yet, and then render it in the language that it's already translated in. And then you can translate to Hindi from there. So it's very easy to build a query and then decide how it's displayed in views. And both of them have flexible configurations for uh, language. And then, of course, views, the output of views is a block that you put on a page. And the block has language uh, visibility. So you can use language visibility there as well to have and show things for the language. So if you master views, you're going to have a very good time. 
Uh, the only unfortunate thing here is uh, the migration path for translated content is still pretty much in the works. It's not easy to figure out how to migrate from both ways to the new way. We have proof of concept patches uh, that need testing and need more help. So if you want to help in that area, now is the right time. Uh, Sunday is going to be a sprint. Uh, we would love to see you there. Let's see you have. The good news, however, is we've also built a language support to the core search module itself and the search API. So it knows about the languages of stuff and whatever language you tried to search in and whatever language the content was in and indexes these translations as separate things. So if you use core search, you'll find them as separate um, items. And node access and general entity access is language support as well. So if you use translation, you can sell uh, access to the Hindi version separate from the English version because we have access uh, support for language too. So that was the third pillar of multilingual support. We have node and entity access support for language. We are indexing um, content separate from language, search APIs, no languages. The migration path is still in the works. Uh, thanks anyone uh, going to help with that. It's all views integrated. And because a lot of things are views, if you want to customize how your node admin page handles language, if you want to put a tab on your node admin page for translators, just clone that display, put on the tab, do whatever with the filters with the display. It's very easy to do. There's no module writing involved. And you can export that into configuration and share that with whatever other sites. Uh, no coding required. Uh, it supports all content entities in core and in contrib. So if you use rules, if you use e-commerce, if you use workbench, whatever, they will work with the system. And it has per bundle field and sometimes uh, sub field level settings. So content types, taxonomy, vocabularies, that's the bundle level. And then the field level is title, author, publishing status, etc. And the sub field level is for some of the fields like files where there are sub field details too. That's content. And we are not done yet. So who found this interesting for their work? Who's going to use this? Very good. Very good. Finally, configuration translation. So the good news for this is, is it's a totally greenfield project in Drupal 8 because 7 had no support for configuration translation. So what people complained about is we actually translated your configuration, but it was a translate, it was a copy of the translation at the time when you installed something. So when you install Drupal in German, you would inst you would create the content types in kind of German at the time of the installation in the state of the language available at the time. And we didn't know what was actually translated and what was not. And then later on, we never updated that translation anymore. And if you change the site default language from German to Hindi, we would never have any idea if it was in German. So this is a total problem. So Drupal 8 would solve that problem, all of those problems one by one. So let's, say what's, let's see what's configuration in the first place. So I talked about these entities that are the thingies, the items in, um, in Drupal 8. And we talked about content entities that are um, usually created on the front end uh, and usually have fields on them, but not, all, not, not always true. Um, and there is configuration as well. And some of those are entities like views, vocabularies, contacts, categories, fields, menus, etc. And some of them are global configuration, like your site information, your user emails, etc. So all of these we know the language of. So site information and user emails, we globally know their language. Uh, I mean, for all the user emails at once and for all the site information at once. And for views, vocabularies, etc., each single one we know their language. So each view, we know which language you created that in, each vocabulary, each content category, each field, each uh, menu, each block, um, block placement. So all those things. Um, there is one area that's kind of left over that we did not get around to is path aliases is kind of an other circle. But the main point here is we have a general solution that's extensible to contributed modules for content and configuration. If you have a contributed module, you are not in the green or the blue circle. You are not using the content API, the entity API, 
and you are not using the configuration API. You're doing something like Path Aliases or something else. You are doing your own custom tables, your own custom data storage, whatever. You are on your own. Okay. We have support for you for content. We have support for you for configuration. If you do something else, you are not following the Drupal framework, you got to resolve your own problems. So we resolve problems in these areas. The way we resolve the problem for configuration is we track language on each config file, each view, each menu, each block. And we store language overrides. So anybody um, heard about the configuration system, how it works, how it's deployed? No, not many, okay. So the configuration system in Drupal 8 is totally separated from the content system in Drupal 8. And it stores configuration in a way that's easy to deploy to other environments. So you can export all of your configuration from your site, work on it in your development environment, see the changes, deploy that to live, review that your changes are fine, and deploy all those changes to live. So very easy to do. The way translation works is there are language overrides to configuration, so we only store the things that you translated. So very, it works very well with the deployment system for configuration in Drupal 8. And it's also very easy to translate. So for everything that is shipped with Drupal core or a module, uh, we have a solution built in the interface translation module. So for example, this is the website feedback um, contact category is a category that's shipped with the Drupal core. So I'm going to translate that by going to interface translation. So user interface translation. Because website feedback was shipped with Drupal core, I'm going there, I'm entering my translation. Saving that. And when I go back, there's actually going to be an English on an English side, and in this case Hungarian is the language I know most. It's going to be Hungarian. So this is a uh, configuration that was already shipped with Drupal Core, so I can use the interface translation system for that. And that's true for all the blocks and all the things, uh, the user emails, the views, everything that was shipped with Drupal Core. The good news about this, that's integrated with interface translation, is um, it's, it has built-in support for translation downloads and updates from the community. So when you install Drupal, every single view that's included, every single field, every single permission, every single um, content type that came with Drupal will be translatable by the community and will get the translations downloaded. And later on, the translations will also be updated from there. So there's no problem like for Drupal 7 where we've installed it in a state of uncertainty and we had no idea later on, etc. So we keep track of all these things and we update all of those translations. So that's, uh, that works with uh, the built-in um, features. So that we can put up on localized Drupal.org because we know that everybody has those features because you downloaded Drupal. For all the rest of the configuration that you make on your site, like your site name or your blocks, we don't know about, so you need to translate it yourself. We have a module for that too, very easy to use. So that's, that's a block. Uh, it has a translate block tab on it. I can just go in there and translate the block label to my own language. I can save the block label, go back to the page, and now that block is translated to Hungarian. So it's easily um, doable with these in-place tabs. Site information, same thing. Translate site information, there is a tab. List of languages, it translates. Now there's a table of things I can translate. I can do my translations for all the things that are in the same information, site name and slogan. Save that. Go back. And now, my site name is translated to Hungarian. The slogan, the block title, the contact category, uh, all in Hungarian. And if I switch back to English, it's going to be English again. So, everything is translatable with the built in configuration translation module. You can go in and translate all the views that you created. You can translate all the content types, all the vocabularies, the menus, everything. And again, it's extensible to contribute. So this works with a standard translation tabs on configuration pages. 
So go to views, there's a translate operation in the list, go to menus, translate operation, go to site information, translate tab, etc., etc. It works with configuration overrides, well integrated with the deployment system and configuration. Um, it works for anything in configuration, in core, in config, and all the ship configuration that came with Drupal and your modules and your themes and your distribution and all those things is already translatable and localized Drupal Android and will hopefully be translated for you. So who liked this area? Cool. So uh, in summary, we have four areas where we improved in Drupal in terms of multilingual. We have a language subsystem which allows you to assign language to whatever you want on the system, uh, including block visibility, 